Hello, and welcome back to Let's Get Lit. In today's episode, we're going to be going over part one, chapter six of George Orwell's classic, 1984. Let's continue on and see exactly what's in store for us, shall we? This chapter starts out with Winston writing in his diary. He writes that three years ago on a dark evening, he was on a narrow side street near one of the big railway stations. There was a woman standing in the doorway in the wall under a street lamp that hardly gave him light. She had a thickly painted face, with members of the, which members of the party never did. There was no one else on the street, and she says, two dollars. His emotions then begin to try to get the best of him. All he wanted to do was shout curse words and bang his head against the wall or kick over the table in any sort of violent or noisy act. But he couldn't do that. His worst enemy was his own nervous system. He mentioned that at any moment, any tension inside of you was liable to translate itself into some visible symptom. And that was worst of all, because in the telescreen, or somebody else, could see it. Winston then talks about a man who was about 35 or 40 and was a party member, and unfortunately, he made the unconscious mistake of his face spasming. And as soon as Winston saw this, he knew he was going to be a goner. Specifically, just because since it was a habitual tick, there was no way he could have guarded against it and from someone turning him in. Winston says that one of the scariest things he can think of is people sleep talking and that's because there's no way of guarding against that and the telescreen can hear and see everything 24 7. he then goes back to writing in his journal saying that he went through the doorway across the backyard and into a basement kitchen there was a bed against the wall with a lamp on a table next to it turned down very low winston stops writing in his journal and begins to think of catherine uh, he tells the reader that he was married or had been married at any rate and that he probably was still married as far as he knew because he didn't know if his wife was dead or not. As he says all of this, he can still remember the smell of the basement kitchen full of bugs and dirty clothes and cheap scent, or perfume. Every time he smelled the smell, he thought about fornication or the prostitute. He mentions that when he was with this prostitute, it had been his first relapse in two years. Winston then goes on to talk about prostitution and sex is involved with the party. He says that prostitution was illegal and forbidden, and that if someone was caught in an act of having sex with the prostitute, they would be sentenced to a minimum of five years and a in a forced labor camp. Winston goes on to say that the party actually was inclined to encourage prostitution as an outlet for instincts which could not be altogether suppressed, as long as they were with people who have a lower class or the proles. Winston says that the biggest crime that could be broken was promiscuity between party members. Winston also says that the party wanted to take the fun and the enjoyable parts out of sex and make it dirty and take it away. This was due to the fact that the party thought that if they could prevent men and women from fornicating or forming loyalties, they would be able to be controlled easier. Winston says that not so much love but eroticism was the enemy inside of marriage, as well as outside of it. He goes on to say that all marriages between party members had to be approved by a committee. He also says the party would never approve of a marriage where two people physically found each other attractive, and that the only reason for marriage was to get children for the service of the party. The party wanted people to think of sexual intercourse as a disgusting minor operation, Winston says, like having an enema. He also goes on to say that none of this was ever stated out loud directly, but that it was always indirectly rubbed into every party member from childhood onward. In fact, the Junior Anti-Sex League advocated for complete celibacy for both sexes and that children were to be gotten by artificial insemination. Winston goes back to thinking about Catherine and how it must have been 9, 10, nearly 11 years since they had parted. The party did not believe in divorce. However, it encouraged separation in cases where there were no children. He goes on to describe Catherine as tall, fair-haired, and very straight with movements. He also goes on to say that she was the most stupid, vulgar, and empty-minded person he'd ever encountered, and that she had not a thought in her head that was not a slogan. He called her the human soundtrack because she wouldn't make a single noise unless it was a party slogan. He also says he could have enjoyed living with her had it not been for the sex. Winston says that every time he tried to touch her, she would wince and stiffen up like a piece of wood. At that time when they were having sex, she laid very rigid and she would shut her eyes. She wasn't resisting or cooperating, but instead submitting. He said that he could have remained his life celibate, but curiously it was Catherine who had refused this. Catherine had two names for sex. One was making a baby and the other was our duty to the party. And yes, she actually said this. She would remind him when it came to the days for them to do this, and he dreaded having to do it. Luckily, no children ever appeared, and in the end, she agreed to stop trying, and they parted afterwards. Winston goes back to writing in his journal that this prostitute threw herself down on the bed, and at once, without any kind of preliminary, and the most coarse, horrible way you could imagine, pulled up her skirt. He then imagines himself in that room with the smell of the prostitute laying down. 
he goes on to think why he could not have a woman in his own instead of having these little scuffles at intervals over the years. But he mentions that a real love affair was an almost unthinkable event. This was due to all the chastity that was ingrained in women from a very young age. Winston says that what he wanted more than anything was to be loved and was to break down the wall of virtue, uh, even if it was only for once in his whole life. He mentioned that the sexual acts successfully performed were rebellion. Desire was a thought crime. He continues in his journal that he turned up the lamp and he saw her in the light. Winston then stops for a moment and records that night and, and how in the brightness of the lamp he saw the woman for truly what she was and realized she was very old. But the makeup that she was wearing was painted on so thick almost looked like cardboard ready to crack. He also noticed when she opened her mouth there was nothing but blackness inside. There was no teeth whatsoever. He then writes in his journal that when he saw her in the light, she was quite old and about 50 years old, if not older. But he went ahead and did it just the same. He then presses his fingers against his eyelids. He had written it down at last, but it made no difference. He thought this was going to help, but instead the urge to shout filthy words at the top of his voice was as strong as ever. This is where chapter 6 of 1984, part 1, ends. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, stay lit.